Yeah, I, I find it find it fascinating that um, that the uh, Westminster Shorter Catechism, Larger Catechism yeah. too, uh, both define prayer as an offering up of our desires unto God. They're, they're, that's the the way both definitions start. Uh, prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God, and and you can read that. I think you can read that definition and think of prayer in some kind of a clinical, rote, you know, just an offering up of our <laughs> desires. It's simply yeah. just a checklist or something. It almost gives that that. And I think there are some perhaps who have read that definition, those two definitions, and thought something very similar. But it's fascinating if you look at the original proof texts. The original proof text uh, turns to, I think alludes to, if I remember correctly, Psalm 68, 5. Uh, it's not, uh, I didn't look at it this morning like I probably should have to see what it was. 62, 8, is it 62, 8? Is it 62, 8? Yeah. Is it 62, 8? Okay, 68, 5. Know well, I think I studied that. Yeah. Is it, is it 62, 8, 62, 8? Yeah, the divines Thank chose 62, 8. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, you perfect. obviously did look at it. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm, looking, I'm so, looking at your book right now. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, so 62, 8, which says, um, pour out your heart yes. to the Lord. And yes. so I think that's fascinating in terms of the minds of the divines as they're thinking through proof texts that will kind of... Uh, confirm and substantiate their claim that prayer is an offering up to God, offering up of our desires mm-hmm. unto God. Uh, they look at Psalm 62.8, uh, that prayer should be as pouring out of our heart uh, as a, a confirmation, if you will, of, of what they have in mind. And so I thought that was significant. And, and really, the more you look at prayer, the more you, you just comb through the Psalms, Mm-hmm. The more you see Jesus' own prayers and 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 everything else in in the Bible, and the more you look at even some of the reformers, 16th and 17th century divines, who um, who talk about prayer, uh, they talk about it very much in the same way mm-hmm. in terms of pleading or yes. pouring out of your right. heart. Mm-hmm. And so I think for me that's been a very helpful way to think through prayer. <clears throat> and then there's a lot that flows out of that. But I think one of the th- one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that prayer is not this clinical offering up simply of a, a, a want list or a Christmas list, if you will. Here we are, Christmas season, <laughs> a Christmas list of our desires and our wants. No, it's a it's a pouring out of our heart. There's a there's a mind heart whole soul mm-hmm. right a, a, a format a approach a engagement a, in prayer. And this reminds us too of, of other prayers in the Bible, like you know Christ in Gethsemane. Yes. And I think that His pouring out of His heart, or right. Old Testament, you know Hannah in That's First right. Samuel one. That's exactly she's, right. You know, praying before the tabernacle uh, there, she's just you, you can almost see you know the the scene of her weeping That's uh, right. and you know. Moving her mouth, no words coming out. That's of course, right. you know Eli comes a little bit thinking she's stuttered drunk. against her, thinking right, she's drunk, right, right? Right. But but it's just her pouring everything out, sure. you know, before the Lord, and, and it starts making us think about you know this heart work of prayer. And you mentioned this in the book too, how prayer also has an aspect of communion uh, with God. And as we're pouring out our heart before the Lord, it's not that you know listing clinical thing that you're talking about. It's this idea of spirit wrought in Christ, union and communion with God that we're experiencing when we're praying. And and that's probably, you know, when I'm thinking about prayer in my own life, that's probably why Satan goes on such an attack against it. Absolutely. Right? Because what he's first and foremost against is communion with God. That's right. Uh, And this means of grace that God has given us is to foster that communion. That's right. Yeah, I go so far in the book to argue is that prayer is intimacy with God in mm-hmm. that light. And it's very much like, as I argue in the book, it's maybe a little bit, um, uh, you know, depending on, on the age of the audience member who's listening, it may be a little bit, uh, may cause you to blush a little bit, may cause me a little bit to blush a little bit. But, I, you know, if you look at marriage and the marriage union, uh, intimacy, sexual intimacy between a husband and a wife is, if you will, covenant glue. It, it, it holds us together, bonds the hearts of the husband and the wife together. And, and, and you know, those who are listening, who are married, will know that, um, that when a husband and a wife are intimate, there is, there is that, 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 that intimacy, that, that communion, that bond that's there, that's stronger. And, and most of the time when someone comes into my office as a pastor, when someone has come into your offices you know, as, as pastors uh, and is going through some kind of marriage difficulty, it's not surprising to find out that in most of the cases, in fact, uh, if, in my experience, every case, I can't think of one in which it wasn't th- th- wasn't this way, the husband and wife had not been intimate for 
a significant amount of time, and it's, and they're wondering why they're going through difficulty, right, through through marriage strife. And I think those things go together. And I make the argument in the book that prayer is that way with our relationship. It's that bond. Uh, it, it knits our heart, if you will, together with the Lord's. Uh, and so that communion, that intimacy uh, is, uh, I think, an integral part of prayer. Yeah, I think so.